Hello there and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking through a concept builder from physicsclassroom.com. It's under the topic static electricity and it's titled charge interactions. This is the third one under the static electricity topic and if you have not yet looked at the second one titled getting the hang getting the hang of charge something like that getting the hang of charge I think is what it's called. Uh, take a look at my video for that. Uh, you can see the link here. Um, it goes into a little bit more detail on this page than I'm going to now. So just remember from chemistry uh, and what we learned yesterday, like charges repel and opposite charges attract. And we also saw that a uh, charge could come up to a neutral item, move the electrons in it, and cause an attraction. So a charged object could attract a neutral object. Okay, so we're going to be applying those four things. Um, that positive and positive repel, negative and negative repel, positive and negative attract, and neutral and a charge attract uh, to this. So let's take a look at that. You're going to have a, a whole bunch of little pieces of information. You're going to have to piece things together. So here's the key things to remember. When you see that two things attract, in this case, B and C attract, but whatever it is that attracts, there are two options. One is they could be opposite charges. Okay, so if B is positive, C could be negative. B is negative, C could be positive. The other option is that one could be charged and the other neutral. Because remember, a neutral thing attracts to a charged item. So uh, if B is negative, C could be positive or neutral. Once again, if B is positive, C could be negative or neutral. Now, there may be another piece of information that contradicts that and makes it so you know C can't be neutral. And here's what it is. The first thing I would do in any of these problems is look through what repels because they have to have a charge. You can eliminate neutral as an option if that object is ever repelled from another object because neutral things are always attracted. So if you see something repelling, it means it is not neutral. Must have a charge, very important. And then of course, once you get to know one of the charges, you know the other one, because they both must have the same charge. Let's get into a sample problem. So here's a sample problem from one of the levels. You can see you start out with some information here, A is negatively charged. Okay, so we know that A, eh, I'll use yellow today, A is negative. Okay, so you can see I've written in here choices for each of them so we can eliminate them as we uh, learn that. So, or as we find out that something should be learned, uh, eliminated. So first we see object A and B are attract. We'll skip that for now. B and C attract. We'll skip that for now. C and D repel. So the first thing we do, like I mentioned on the last slide, C and D repel. That means we should eliminate C and D cannot be neutral. Okay. And then we see D and E repel. Okay, so D and E repel. So if D and E repel, that means E cannot be neutral. Because once again, if it repels, it has to have a charge. Because neutral things attract to, um, attract to, uh, neutral things attract to anything that has a charge. Sorry about that. Um, so now let's go back and see what we can track through here. Well, if we, the first thing we see here, we know A is negative, and we know A and B attract. So there are two options when things attract. One is that they could be opposites because opposites attract. But also, it could be neutral because a charged thing, like A is charged, could attract a neutral thing. So now we've kind of hit a point where there's going to be two different options for everything. How do they interact with a positive B and how do they interact with a neutral B? Okay, so let's first take a look at a positive B. So if B is positive, then we see that B and C attract. Okay, so we already know that C can't be neutral. Okay, so if B and C attract, 
Well, if B is positive, then that means C could be negative. Okay, so if that's the only option, if B is positive. But what if B is neutral? Well, if B is neutral, B attracts to C. That means C would have to have a charge, which we already know it does because C repels from D. And so if this is neutral, it could be either positive or negative. So it could be either of those. Okay, so to carry that thought process on, if C is positive, then D would be positive because if they repel, they have to have the same charge. And D repels E, once again, right here, D and E repel. So if D is positive, E is positive. But then on the other hand, if C was negative, which is an option that we have currently, if C is negative, since it repels D, then D would have to be negative. And if D repels E, then they would have to have the same charge and E would be negative. So for this one, there are a lot of options, which is why I chose it, because a lot of options are typically harder to do. So I want to do one of the harder problems here. So we see that in this case, then B, we would put it could be positive or neutral. C would be positive or negative. D would be positive or negative, And E would be positive or negative. OK. Um, keep in mind, if we'd said D and E could uh, uh, D and E attract, then E hasn't repelled anything, and it could also be neutral, following if everything else is the same in this particular problem. All right, well, with that, uh, get in there, use your clues up here, get your detective hat on, figure out how to put those clues together. Remember, the biggest key is to start with repelling, that both things that repel must have a charge, okay? and they will have the same charge. Then once you've done that, then go through and start doing your little forked things where it could be opposite or one of them could be neutral. All right, uh, have fun doing the concept builder and learning a little bit about physics. We'll see you next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.